Hello and welcome to a review for the 8th episode in the 7th season of The 100. We just got done watching Anaconda and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. I was very very nervous for the going into this episode because I thought we might you know see a lot of actors and actresses that I, I didn't like and they're I don't know I felt like maybe they wouldn't live up to my expectations of the 100. I really like the show and I really like the the people that they cast. I, I feel like they play the characters really well. They're very believable and yet funny. And I, I think they've established some really likable characters, some really interesting dynamics. And I'm actually super excited to see them explore that a little bit more and work that into what we already know about this, this world. It's pretty cool that they introduced Tree Crew already mm -hmm. it was a little bit weird at first i think both you and me were like wait why are they doing this this yeah. doesn't seem necessary it seems like it was more like born out of the geography in which people lived but there's going to be more story behind it and i can't wait to see the ice nation in particular how that's formed i mean that's going to be explored a lot in the prequels we're obviously going to see reese chasing down callie and august um with the help of Tristan and maybe the mom. The mom will, I think, initially be with Reese and Tristan, but I don't know how that whole dynamic is going to really play out, man, because she, she did seem like she was more on Bill's side by the end of the episode. She said something like, to the effect of, he's been right about a lot of things. This, this stone is our, our path forward. I want to go through this. And, She's not going to get that opportunity. He turned his back on her when she helped uh, the flame get away. Um, made it possible for Cadigan to go into this, like, light the final code. Uh, so, I don't know. That type of stuff, I really, really enjoyed. I thought it would be cool if maybe they used Anaconda to tell more of a story. The name of the episode, because they've done that a lot recently. Mm -hmm. um, but you looked it up, and I looked it up, and we couldn't really see any direct connections to uh, the word and how it's been used in the past. You looked up some military stuff, and there was something in the American Civil War, or something, I think, like, more recently. Was it the Iraq War? Afghanistan War, yeah. Uh, Afghanistan War. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just, I think, a nice, clever little phrase that they use to mark the end of the world. Is that your takeaway? Um, I think they'll probably go into it more mm -hmm. when we get the next um, series, possibly. I don't know. I'm not really sure why they call it Anaconda, besides, um, I mean, it could be a metaphor for Cadigan himself, because <laughs> he just eats up everything in front of him, Yeah. doesn't really care about hurting other people, his family. I really did not like his character. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, obviously that's the point. Yeah. But uh, it was just, it's so, like, has notes of, like, white savior-ish mm -hmm. stuff. And obviously, like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he was very slimy. And yeah. Like, so I see what you're saying. I, and as you were talking, I just had an idea. What if on the other side of the light there's some alien creatures that look like anacondas or something along those lines. Maybe it's just one How giant would they anaconda. Know that? They, they don't know that yet. It's just maybe, I don't know, a tie into the name that we haven't quite gotten to yet. But yeah. It seems like know, a bit of a stretch. That is a stretch. It's yeah. definitely a stretch. But, but you know what wasn't a stretch? Me calling that there was a space ball on Earth. Yeah, you definitely did that. that. I don't remember yes. which episode it was. It was a little while ago. It definitely wasn't like the last two episodes. Yeah. I think there was definitely some clues out there, but there was enough doubt um, in my mind that I wasn't ready to say that quite yet. Yeah, um, you didn't want to believe me. I don't know how. Like, I, I expected Bill to get off, maybe through a Legis 3 or a spaceship and something along those lines, but I think just for simplicity's sake, this makes the most sense. Yeah. It was there in the bunker. They're going to have to deal with that later in the prequel. They're going to have to explain why it wasn't there when Clark's people got there. I mean, it makes sense that the bunker was super clean. They only had the people in there for two years. That's not very long, not as long as they thought That's they'd have true. to be there. Why? That's not true. That they only had the people in there for two years. They had all of the people only in there for two years. And then, like, what, 
maybe a third or a quarter of them took off into earth and then Cadigan and his disciples which didn't seem like that many people mm-hmm. you know blast it off um you think some into people, space. I think they probably just abandoned people there. Yeah, you think there's some people left behind in the bunker? Yeah, and okay. my guess is that Callie comes back, or, you know, someone mm-hmm. in Tree Crew, and they come back and kind of take those people out in a few years. Yeah, it makes sense for Callie to leave behind some people to guard the bunker so that people couldn't, so that they couldn't follow them through the anomaly. So... Well, I would prefer to believe that Cadian just doesn't care about his followers at all and just abandoned them because Mm -hmm. that's kind of his M.O. He's been abandoning, he abandoned his wife, his daughter, his son, he did abandon. Yeah, he did not take him. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. And apparently that was a constant throughout that kid's life. Yeah, he always felt like he was enough for his father. I'm sorry that dad never loved you like he loves me, you know? Was was he a younger brother, do you think? He seemed older to me. Seemed like he might be an older brother. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't I, talking about school or anything. He, he was done with that. Or maybe he never pursued that because his dad brought him into the cult very early on. Yeah. Maybe before he was even through high school. It's it's definitely a, a, a backstory we're going to get more information on. I was shocked that Callie shot him. I didn't see that coming. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I was not surprised by that. <laughs> what I was surprised by was that um, Becca was only on Earth for like five days. Yeah. I was so surprised by that. I mm-hmm. really thought that she would have been there a little bit longer. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, in terms of just moving the story along, that's that's why they chose to do it that way. But I agree. It's like, how did she have such a large impact um, on, on them in that short period of time? I get Callie's like a massive fan, and it, all these other people wanted a, to not a, follow Cadigan. Well, also, he was afraid of being overpowered, overruled by someone else. Mm-hmm. Especially a woman. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah, honestly, maybe kinda. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they definitely seem to be like going in that direction with the characters. Yeah. Um, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I think that they're they're allowed to do that a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's it's different um, from I think a lot of di- different sci-fi shows. I know there has been a bit of a movement to have more empowered women, but it's still like a, a small select. Like there's not a giant uh, amount of options for those types of shows. So it's nice to see um, some characters that I'm personally really excited to get to know, not just because they're a woman, but because their story seems really interesting. There was that you line. Mean Callie? Yeah, like I don't she, think we're gonna see anything else from them the rest of the season. Yeah, but in the prequel. I'm excited for the prequel wow. because... Who knows when that's coming out? Yeah, that could be like years from now. Probably will be years from now, actually. Um, At least next year. They didn't, but they um, probably can't even film right... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's it's going to be delayed for a while because of, of reasons. But, um... Oh, boy, I forgot what I was going to say there. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Something about... What were we saying right before filming? That I'm not, we're not going to see Cat Lee again. In this season? Yeah. Um, and you were talking about characters that right. we need to know. There was that line about Harvard, about Becca going to Harvard when she was 10, and it was very much like, oh, look at this super amazing accomplished woman, and it was a little bit on the nose. literally burned at the stake <laughs> by a white dude. Yeah, that's pretty lame of them. Mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah, though, honestly, kind of lame. Like, obviously, we knew that was going to happen Yeah. from before. Um, and that's something you said, uh, or no, when Becca comes down to Earth, while wow, this is like really scattered, when Becca like drops down to Earth, you mm-hmm. said something about how it, when we saw that scene earlier in the series that it seemed different. Yeah, I think they were like, they were in rags, they weren't, they didn't look like they were in suits from what I remember. I thought they were savages, but maybe I'm just I remembering the scene completely wrong, maybe they had no, some No, I remember it being like daytime, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like more of a, like a, I don't know, um, a, a culture instead of just like people who were underground, you know, it seemed mm-hmm. like they were more established mm-hmm. that it, you know, in the, um, the crews and stuff yeah. on land. So I kind of wish we had gone back and checked for that scene, but I have no idea where it was, so. <laughs> it could be that, you know, the flame is 100% accurate and they just retconned it or it's like memories I mean, that would be fascinating. a little bit. Yeah. 
if like it can't be 100% accurate over time, there's some degradation of memory. So, I mean, there's a I lot mean, of stuff stored in that AI. Well, that, but also like as other people experience those memories, they're probably putting their own kind of twist on it. And mm-hmm. just like, I mean, I think that would be so fascinating. Yeah. If that was really, you know, I, unrivaled narrators. I, I really enjoyed Becca having a heightened sense of sound. I thought they were going to go... With, oh, it's, it's not as much sound, just like frequency. Yeah, like she could hear things that you couldn't yeah. hear. And uh, I, was, I thought they were going to do more with that. I thought she was going to just be like super combat efficient without any combat training and be able to like es- do a- escape or help Callie or something along those lines. Um, but I think they're saving that more for, for later. They're going to have... I think Callie gets playing because, well, actually, we don't know if she gets it because Bill just thought that she was in the flame because she took the flame. There may be some. Well, I, I mean, yeah. it seemed like we kind of that whole thing was like us seeing the memories from Callie through Clark. So. Yeah, I think you're and right. And Clark made a comment about like you killed my best friend. Well, no, I think that was... Oh, Bellamy. about Melanie? Yeah, that was well, Bellamy right could there. be the other one, too. It could have been. And you're thinking Lucy? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I think... I I was really surprised they just knocked her out and left her like that. I hope we see more of her. It's gonna I'm be... not that surprised. I mean, she wouldn't have gotten in anyways, yeah. as we know from Janie. And I want to know, how do you become low 12? Like, what is the... Uh... What is the... You pay a million dollars. I know. I'm pretty sure it's it? Those people like didn't look that rich, yeah. you know? Well, I, I, what I liked about the level 12 stuff in this episode is there's obviously not everybody made it to the bunker or chose not to go to yeah. the bunker. And, and one of those keys has to show up later, uh, the, the, de- the keys that open the door. I just think yeah. it's, it's too convenient that not everybody made it, which means there's keys out there for them to get back in there and deal with the anomaly stone. Maybe Callie and other people went through anomaly and she's kind of doing something similar to bill and she's not she's not quite dead um well the key didn't really seem like a um like a pass or anything it just seemed like you get this because you're level 12 Mm -hmm. and then you don't really use it to get in is that what you're feeling i guess so if i thought she 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 had a key they'd just be able to open the door but then that would kill it some people in Bunker at least expose them to a bunch of radiation. So well, you're probably Callie right. just walked in and dropped her key in like a little dish on the side. Is that what happened? Yes. Okay. So, and the doors were wide open, so I don't think it was really... We'll it see. It seemed like it was more key code based than like, or like pin code. Yeah. Just, we'll, we'll see more about that later. Probably, now that you, you mentioned it, it's probably more of a verification thing. Like, oh, there's a little 12 person, then we'll let them in. Then mm-hmm. we, we, uh, We'll make that exception for them, but no one else. But I feel like there's probably more to the level 12 stuff, yeah. um, but I don't know what it could, could be. They're not all night bloods, or maybe they are. That'd be weird um, if somehow they had access to. No, because that could hit up in space while they were underground. Um, but there has to be something more to it than that. I mean, I do, there doesn't have to be. Maybe they just were the people who paid a lot of money, they're the most devout people. Uh, what if it was like um, based on like your your positive attributes that you could contribute to a society? Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. remember way back when they were like, oh, here's our list of like people who would we would save. Yeah. Um, the one hundred. The most like viable <laughs> people. Yeah, that was creepy. I I mean now just thinking about it, maybe it's related to Machu Picchu and him stealing mm-hmm. um, cultural artifacts because maybe. There's more things that he stole and we just didn't get to in this episode that yeah, he could have given to. I mean, if he managed to people. steal something that big, he probably snuck a few other things out of there. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure what to expect from him. I think he's gonna be a yeah a villain. That's the the obvious path for him to go down. But he's got um, potentially Octavia, Echo, and Dioza and Hope on his side. I don't know how long they've been working with him fighting this war. It could be there's there's some kind of time jump that we didn't see. Um, I don't think they're on his side. Yeah, they I just want to get back. That's what it seemed like when Echo was like, oh, here's what we're doing now. Yeah, they, you know? they didn't change uh, Echo's hair again, so 
probably. Yeah, I really, so. I highly doubt that Echo would be the one to suggest that they join teams with the people that killed Emily. Yeah. That seems really unlikely. So yeah. I think it's more like a infiltrating from the inside. Who knows, maybe they've seen more about this war and they know a little bit about what's on the other side of the light. Um, because we didn't see anything about the war to end all wars in this, this prequel episode. They're going to get to that at some point. I think they're going to unleash something horrible and maybe Bill's going to be the one that can save them and protect them. He could, it, that would be an interesting dynamic. Um, but they obviously don't want to work with him because he's a little crazy. Uh, I, I don't know. What else was there? We got some good info at the beginning about 11 billionth um, child being born in an internment camp. There's a lot of stuff in the background that I couldn't quite piece out. And if anybody's got any theories about that that they want to share with us, I, I for one, would love to hear your thoughts on that. I did like the hollow um, phone thing, the 3D image. It, it felt very sci-fi. Oh, yeah. It felt kind of like in Star Wars where the, the villains are talking <laughs> like mm -hmm. that for no reason. It just, I don't know, it's like FaceTime, but more intense. <laughs> 3D FaceTime, why not? I guess it's cool that she got into MIT. I thought Becca would have gone to a school more like MIT than, than Harvard, because I don't know how much uh, Harvard specializes in robotics, but she went there when she was very young, so she obviously had time to I mean, develop she was almost other 10. things. She probably went to the best school that was in distance of her family, right? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Why not? I kind of don't think they put a 10-year-old in the dorms. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably see more about the doomsday packs, I think. That's probably part of how people survived on Earth. Um, maybe some level 12 people that, like, helped out the people around them. They weren't all on Bill's side. They were just kind of there to get the information. Um, there was a cool line about Dad, Bill, having friends on the space stations, which I kind of was thinking about, that it would make sense if maybe um, Clark was the key because her dad was a second Don member and somehow they were able to piece that all together based on some information in the memories. But it's probably that Bill still thinks the flame is in Clark's head. He hasn't seen any memories from after that point when uh, they put in Maddie. So he's probably just, yeah, convinced that she has it and that's why he's like, oh, he's Callie in there. Um, but I'm not sure. There, there could be other things that I'm forgetting or missing here. Poor Tristan, he got knocked out a couple times. He did something cool at the beginning with that guy, August. He knocked him out. August then knocked him out. So I guess they're showing these guys are both combat efficient. Maybe Tristan is no, a little they... bit more, I don't know, direct. And then August snuck up on him. He's a little bit more sneaky. You don't think so? You think Tristan's useless? Um, I don't think we're going to see him again. Tristan? He I went outside with Reese. He's like the one guy on Reese's side on Earth that we know of. Okay. I think we will. I think since he's a Nightblood and uh, he was like the first person Beck gave the Nightblood to, that he's actually going to become a pretty important character in the prequel series. Maybe not like the main one, maybe kind of like a side character like Miller, but still somebody who's going to be in the show for a while. Or maybe they'll kill him off like in the first few episodes just to make a point. What else do we want to mention here? I think I'm getting to the end of my notes. Yeah, the mom wanted to talk about the blood with Becca. She didn't want to do that. Um, Becca wasn't ready to talk to anyone else except for Callie about it. There's seven points that they needed to go through the anomaly. I, I think that's great. They're using some science there because I've definitely heard that before. Uh, but there's more to it than that. They needed ten inputs. So what are the, what are the remaining three exactly? That's going to be an interesting thing for them to play around with. I think we'll get some answers to that at the end of this, this season of the 100. I don't think we'll have to wait for the prequels for that. Yeah, I don't know. 
I think Maddie, I don't think we mentioned it earlier, Maddie had a vision that was the bright light, and she mm-hmm. said something about, like, the things on the other side are dangerous. So I think we, we kind of confirmed that, obviously, Becca was super scared, kind of praying and, and cold. I think she was shivering a little bit. So, yeah, you know what that means, exactly. Maybe it has a little bit to do with Nakara. I don't know. I mean, she could have been shivering from fear. It's true. But overall, I thought this was a pretty good episode. I enjoyed it. Um, curious to see what happens next week because even though this was like a fun episode with like, you know, mostly flashback or not even flashback, like flash prequel. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure how much we really, how much is going to advance the story besides all the background on Cadigan. Yeah, it was a deviation for sure, and it's going to be nice to get back to the characters we know and love, but like I said earlier, all in all, I liked it. It's a good setup for a new show. We're going to be reviewing that, I think, whenever it does get around to coming out. Yeah. But yeah, that's all we have here. See you around. Have a good one.